Hey guys, what's up? Darcy here at Six Strings Nine Lives. First off, Happy New Year. And I want to thank you very much for just making 2023 a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to 2024. There is many new releases that we're speculating will come out, some already confirmed. I think it's going to be a busy year in metal, and I am really looking forward to it. A few other things uh, amongst these re-rankings or updated rankings, which Metal Church we're going to do today. Uh, that new album, uh, Congregation of Annihilation, has been out for, you know, six, almost seven months already. I think seven months. So that's kind of right in my ballpark of, uh, you know, absorbing the album, putting it where it should be. And uh, actually my Metal Church ranking from before was quite old already. I think it was like five years old. It didn't even have Damned If You Do on it. So we're going to update that today. Uh, I'm also working on an updated uh, UDO. If any fans out there of UDO, Accept, Primal Fear, bands like that, that will be right up your alley. I think towards the, you know, the middle of the year, I will definitely update the Judas Priest ranking, you know, with the new album Invincible Shield coming out in March. Also, we will update the Saxon ranking. Um, mine is a little bit older. Well, actually, it missed one album, Carpe Diem, and then, of course, the new album coming out here in the third week of January called Hell, Fire, and Damnation. Definitely looking forward to that. Uh, you know, throw it down in the comments if you want to see other rankings. I do rankings if I own the albums. I, I'm just not that picture-in-the-corner guy. I, I'm a physical media uh, person who likes to know the album, hold it up, not... Uh, you know, listen to, to listen to a bunch of shit on Spotify and, you know, make up a ranking. That's just not me. But anyways, I think another one I will do if you are, you know, a, a, a fan of the Canadian band Anvil. They have a new album coming out this year. It hasn't been announced yet, but it will be out. So I think towards maybe the middle or the end of the year, we'll do an Anvil ranking. If, you know, if there's anybody interested in, um, in that, we'll do that. But for today, we are going to start off with a re-ranking that I've been wanting to do. But like I said, I wanted to get, you know, a good six months in with this new album. So there's 13 albums here to cover from Metal Church. You know, a band that's really, they persevered. They have uh, had, you know, two main vocalists pass away, David Wayne and Mike Howe. Uh, rest in peace to both of those guys. They've had... You know, I don't know if they've really had a, a big break overall with, uh, you know, in the scene. They've had some label, um, you know, dropped from a couple labels, dropped from Elektra, dropped from Epic Records, um, you know, uh, dropped from SPV. They've had, you know, quite a few lineup changes, but they're still here and I still love them. A band that I've been personally following since 1986 I actually got to see them. I still have my ticket stub. I've shown this ticket stub in several videos. But this is Metallica, 1986, December 15th. Metal Church opened for Metallica. I had the tickets ahead of time, you know, a couple months. And uh, the album, they were touring on the album The Dark. in, uh, And that came out in October of 86. So I, I had the cassette. I knew the album going into it fantastic concert that was my real first you know thrash if you want to still call it thrash concert well you know Metallica of course but you know I was thinking about back then even Metal Church with you know the first couple albums do have some thrashy elements but they were now thinking back they were closer to Metallica's sound um more than you actually think and it's, you know, it's kind of come full circle with Metallica. Uh, Metal Church have always sounded like Metal Church. But anyways, I'm babbling on. Let's get into this ranking. Like I said, 13 albums to cover. There is a period here where um, people do just lose track of Metal Church. They have no idea, you know, the, the Ronnie Monroe uh, era on vocals. They've had four vocalists. So, well, now four vocalists with Mark Lopes taking over. Uh, you know, in, I think, early 2022 or whenever it was announced. But anyways, let's get on with this. Coming in at number 13, their sixth overall studio album. And reunion with 
four fifths of the original lineup minus um, Craig Wells. This is Masterpiece, first with David Wayne since, uh, of course, The Dark, 1986. This one was released on Nuclear Blast. Now, why, why is this one coming in last? Well, I, I love David Wayne, but his range on this album isn't quite what it used to be, but it's not the downfall of the album. The, the, the songs overall just aren't that memorable. Um, we also do have John Marshall on here, who might as well be, you know, I guess he's not a, a uh, original member, but he was a longtime member of the band. Uh, but there's the cover. 1999, so first since uh, The Dark in 86. But there is a few really standout tracks on here. One kind of not so good cover of Aerosmith's Toys in the Attic. I would probably, you pass that one. But check out the opening track, Sleeps with Thunder. Uh, Kiss for the Dead, that's a great track. And then the title track, and probably my favorite track is They Signed in Blood. There is areas where David hits that those super, you know, eerie highs on here, but not quite what he used to be, and that's okay. I mean, things happened, and we get older. Like I said, what, what would it be, 13, 13 years since the dark? So coming in at number 12 is 2006. A Light in the Dark, eighth overall studio album, second with um, 06. So this would be second with Ronnie Monroe on vocals, second with Jay Reynolds. You'd be familiar with Jay Reynolds if you listen to a band uh, called Malice. Malice, great. Their first two albums are their must-haves, uh, In the Beginning and uh, Violent something. Uh, skipping, skipping my mind at the moment, but A Light in the Dark, so a lot of this stuff um, is based, all of it, almost all of it, of the later work is produced by Kurt Vanderhoof. Really, Kurt Vanderhoof is Metal Church. He's always been involved in the band. He hasn't uh, always toured with them, but he's always there. It's It would be like taking Dave Mustaine out of Megadeth if you took. There would be no Metal Church without Kurt. Um, great riff writer, great producer, but... There's the cover with, uh, you're often going to see this uh, uh, Gibson Explorer on these covers. But I would say, well, I will say this is the weakest of the four albums that Ronnie was on. Um, what else? First album to feature Jeff played on drums. Fantastic drummer was in the band for quite a few years. Uh, tracks to check out. Uh, title track's really good. Beyond All Reason. Where is that one? Uh, Son of the Sun, great song. Check that one out. And More Than Your Master, sorry, the font is little. And they did a kind of a tribute to David Wayne. They remade the song Watch the Children Pray. And you know what? Ronnie did a heck of a job on that one. But I think what kind of holds back this album and why I say it's the weakest, his vocals just weren't top notch on this one they weren't as in the forefront as they are on some of these other albums i'll show you but there it is number 12 a light in the dark one of those albums that a lot of people don't know <clears throat> and some of these are actually quite hard to get long out of print type of thing all right moving on coming in at number 11 seventh overall studio album and first in five years this is kind of a re another reunion album. This is The Weight of the World. So first to feature, well, we actually had Kurt Arrington on drums here. May he rest in peace also. First with Jay Reynolds, first of two, as I mentioned. He's also on A Light in the Dark. And uh, first to feature longtime bassist, still in the band, Steve Unger. He's pretty awesome uh, bass player. And like I said, he's been in the band here now since, you know, what, 20 years so reunion type album released this one is released on spv steam hammer there's the cover actually i really like this cover it's pretty cool always love the metal church logo um, it's very consistent except for the debut which you'll see in a bit but yeah seventh overall studio album um i guess following the failed comeback of masterpiece and that 
uh, bringing the original lineup together. It just didn't work out. <clears throat> not a disaster, like I said before, not a disaster of an album, but this one is much better. Uh, first to feature Ronnie Monroe on vocals. Go check out the tracks that actually, they have a lot of really good lead off tracks. So leave them behind, really good song. And two of my favorites on here, Sunless Sky and Cradle to the Grave. Um, yeah, check those out. So there it is, number 11, The Weight of the World. Some of these really need a reissue so people can hear them. There's just that period of metal church that people just, either they don't know it exists or they just like, ah, I don't want to try it. But, you know, after this new album, I, I which you're going to see soon because, uh, I don't know, I just think metal church is just very you know, steady, blue collar work ethic, get an album out, go touring, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, moving on, coming in at number 10, 2013's Generation Nothing. So this is the 10th overall studio album. There was a break. So this was another five-year break where they, they were pretty much uh, dormant during those five years, probably 2009 till early 2012 they got back together brought in um brought in ronnie again on vocals and I, this is the first one that was released on rat pack records um yeah and like i said last to feature ronnie generation nothing pretty cool cover again and that awesome metal church logo here's the back uh this one i would love to pick this one up on vinyl it would be on my vinyl reissue wish list for sure but check out the tracks. Uh, again, lead off track, Bulletproof, really good. Uh, Dead City, uh, Suicide, Suicide City. It's, it, it's kind of a play on words of suicide and, and city, like um, world's coming to an end. The, 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 lots of social um, lyrics with Metal Church, and uh, which you probably already know. And check out the track. Um, Hits Keep Coming. That's another good uh, track also. So there is number 10 from 2013. And then, um, well, we'll get, actually, I'll just throw that other part in the story after because we know what happened after 2013, who came back in the band, but we're not quite there yet. So, all right, coming in at number nine, this is uh, 2008's This Present Wasteland. Now, this is my favorite of the Ronnie Monroe era. And yes, you see um, some of the Ronnie albums, you know, closer to the bottom. Honestly, it doesn't mean they're shit in any way. It's just that I have, I guess, three other vocalists that I prefer a little bit better. Uh, but here is the cover. So this cover is actually a contest winner. If you open this one up, you're going to see... Actually, I'll just show you the collage because... It was kind of send in your ideas and a cover would be picked. So there's a whole bunch of entries right there. So pretty cool thing to do actually. And um, let's see. Yeah, they have a bunch on the inside with the lyrics too, where they show, um, you know, um, covers that they considered. But this is the one that one, I think it's pretty cool that cross with the reflection of the Gibson Explorer. So this one is the first with Rick Van, Sant, Rick Van Zant on second guitar, which I think he made a huge impact right away, even on Generation Nothing, which was an album that came la oh, past this one. Rick Van Zant still in the band to this day, and nothing against Jay Reynolds. He came in and did a really good job, but I think Rick really fits this band better. Um, and right away, like the guitar playing and the guitar sound. Sometimes what you'll find with a Metal Church album is the guitars are a little bit buried. They're in the background. I don't know if that's always intentional, but the guitar sound on this one sounds really good. Good soloing on this and uh, tracks to check out on this one. Uh, and if I didn't mention, so that number nine, 2008. Check out my favorite track on this is... Um, Deeds of a Dead Soul, and a couple other ones, Monster, and um, Mass Hysteria. And this one closes out with Congregation, which is, hey, is that a little foreshadowing? I don't know, but actually the word is also mentioned in my favorite 
Metal Church single song, which is called Metal Church. So you got congregation in the lyrics to that too. But anyways, number nine, This Present Wasteland. So me personally, if you have not heard much of the Ronnie Monroe era, go check this one out. I, I think you'll like it. <clears throat> you might be surprised and say, hey, you know what? I am going to check out some more Metal Church. But uh, here we go with that. And now we get into a little bit of vinyl that I have. Grab a quick drink. Coming in at number eight, and these next two, honestly, they might as well just be almost tied, but I'm going to go with uh, my number eight is their 11th overall studio album and comeback album of Mike Howe, XI11, however you want to say it, but this is, uh, so around 2015, probably prior to 2015, Kurt was, you know, phones Mike up and said, you know, do you want to come back? Let's do some music, you know, get Metal Church going again. I don't know if originally it was going to be a Metal Church project, but it turned out to be. They remade the uh, song The Badlands in 2015, released it as a single. It was awesome. I know they also did a song um, they did Fake Healer with Todd LaTorre and Mike singing. That's pretty awesome if you haven't checked it out. But here is, uh, yeah, here is my number eight, 2016's XI, <clears throat> released in North America on uh, Rat Pack and then in uh, Rest of the World, Nuclear Blast. Killer first three tracks. I really, I think that's the difference between this one and the next one for me, is just a more... The next one is just a more level, uh, you know, better songwriting throughout and maybe, yeah, a better full album. Let's put it that way. But anyways, when you kick this one off with Reset, uh, Killing Your Time, it's just so good to have Mike back. You just hear those, oh, like his range is phenomenal still. Um, and then No Tomorrow, great song. And then I would uh, also throw in Needle and the Suture, which was also a video. But yeah, there's my number, um, what did we say? Number eight, XI. Coming in at number seven, 12th overall studio album, and last to feature Mike. Uh, you know, and I thought after this, I mean, are these guys going to continue? But we know the answer to that. But anyways, this one is the last to feature Mike. First one to feature Stead, uh, Stead Howland on drums. He was uh, previously with, uh, you probably best know him from Wasp. He took over for Jeff on drums. Other than that, the lineup's the same. You still have Steve, Rick, of course, Kurt. But yeah, damned if you do. I love this album cover. Um, and I think they, whoever did this album cover probably did the next one uh, in line too. But anyways, 12th overall studio album. They're... And like I said, um, just more consistent. I, my favorite track, if you actually, if you don't know the album and you want to check out one track, it is called Revolution Underway. Just the, the, the melody on that one. And you know, you'll know Metal Church. And when I say Metal Church has a sound, they act, they have a sound, which is a lot of clean, electric clean guitars, not a lot of distortion, um, you know, nice um, uh, intros into these songs like Badlands, lots of build-ups, stuff like that. But yeah, also check out, uh, the track listing isn't the same, actually the album's different uh, than the CD, but so now I know I know the CD actually better than, than the vinyl. I don't know why, but I do. Also, Damned If You Do, that is a great title track. The Black Things is another one of my favorites. And uh, where is it now? By the numbers. There it is. That was also a video for it too. So there is my number seven, uh, 12th overall studio album from 2018. And then after that, you know, Mike passes away and Mike's been gone since, well, I think this summer will be three years. Um, and when I heard the announcement that Metal Church would still be going, um, I was very happy. We didn't know, quite know the vocalist at the time. I, I did speculate myself, or I guess my wish list would have been, I thought, you know, Todd LaTorre would really fit this band, but he's busy with Queensryche and his solo stuff. 
and you know maybe he's his name is you know not that he's massive or whatever but maybe his name's too big and then i thought how about todd michael hall um from riot five but you know he had a great solo album more of a rock album and he's busy with riot five so i'm like who could it be and then they announced that it would be mark lopes who spent time with uh, ross the boss band and uh i forget the other band he was in but here's my number six this one is growing on me and growing on me right to be able to reach this uh position in the ranking and yes i put it ahead of two mike howe comeback albums because i do love it that much um i still stand by what i've said about the vocals but it's only a couple of tracks and i you know don't overreact but i, I do think mark pushes it a little too hard on a couple of tracks like i said there's 11 12 tracks on here it's not a big deal and then I was thinking, you know, who the hell doesn't push it these days, you know, or overdoes it. So whatever. Anyways, love this cover and well deserving of the sixth spot. If you have not picked this up from 2023, go grab it. Mark is the perfect fit for this band. I would say he's he's not a clone of either singer, but he's probably 65% David Wayne, 35% Mike Howe or whatever 55 and then 20 percent himself i don't know you know what i'm saying he is a good vocalist i can see exactly or hear that he can do all the old material and the the mic stuff easy you know fake healer stuff like that uh, uh badlands no problem he like i said so on here go check out the tracks my favorite track on here is called me the nothing there was uh, singles for Pick a God and Pray, Making Monsters, both great songs. There is, I think what sets this one above the two previous albums, X, I, and Damned If You Do, there's more variety on here. And I know a lot of this was probably written for Mike, and I can, you know, vision it in my head of Mike singing that, but... Mark comes in and, and does a great job. So I'm really looking forward to what they do kind of from scratch with Mark. And um, they're already going to be working on their next album in late 2024. So hopefully we see a new metal church in 2025. Also check out the tracks, Children of the Lie, really good track. And um, These Violent Thrills, really the whole album is solid. Coming in number six. Congregation of Annihilation. So what do we got left here? We got five left, and these are all... Well, it's, I'm already on must-have metal church, so we'll just continue with that. Now, besides this crazy-looking album cover, which I actually don't really mind, but it doesn't scream out, hey, buy me, I'm a really good metal album. Uh, and 1993 wasn't the best year, so you know what I'm already talking about. This, coming in at number five, fifth overall studio album, Hanging in the Balance. Uh, from what I've heard, this is due for a reissue in 2024. I definitely will be picking it up. Uh, this cover does not really tell you what's inside here, because this is another one of those albums, um, you know, you got your second original lineup you know you got john marshall mike's on vocals kurt not on this album still in the background uh, you know uh, calling the shots i mean his name is on every single uh song that metal church ever wrote you know uh, minus cover songs and then this was the last album till they re uh, did the reunion with david wayne but go and check out this album tough one to get if you ever see it you know, for a good price, pick it up because this is easily a $50 CD these days. But I'm going to give you three track, tracks. That's going to be your homework to check out. Gods of, of uh, Second Chance, the leadoff track, fantastic. Track two, Losers in the Game. And then my favorite track, uh, track five, Waiting for a Savior. This is classic Metal Church. Uh, Mike sounds phenomenal. It's too bad at all went to shit after that but yeah there's my number five hanging in the balance four left coming in at number four 
first and only album on Epic Records. And really this one and the next one are so close. I, I just, anyways, here we go. The Human Factor. 1991, like I said, first on Epic Records. This is a recent music on vinyl reissue. They did a killer job on this. Very glossy cover, but uh, if you've somehow missed this album, um, tough one to get on CD too. It would sure could use a reissue. I think maybe, I wonder if music on CD even reissued this one. I actually don't know that. Uh, this one produced by, so they went back with, uh, Mark Dotson produces this one. He also produced The Dark. Um, anyways, we'll talk about that in a second, but this one opposed to, um, Blessing in Disguise, the production on this is less polished, some strong lyrical themes, but yeah, what a great album this is. Human Factor, Date with Poverty, The Final Word, um, In Mourning, the whole A side is so good on this, even the B side, Agent Green, but my favorite track on here is called In Harm's Way. It's, you know, uh, child abuse type of lyrics. It's heavy, heavy hearted lyrics, but man, so emotional. Mike's vocals just about, they, they put you right there, right there in the room with him. Um, yeah, so there is my number, what do we say? Number four, The Human Factor. If you don't own this, you should. Really good. And you kind of seen where my foreshadowing was going with this. But my number three is 1989's Blessing in Disguise. First with this lineup, you know, um, you know, live lineup, recording wise, I mean, like I said, Kurt, Kurt's there, don't you worry. But uh, John Marshall, you got Duke, Duke is still in the band, bass player Duke Erickson, uh, Erickson, uh, Craig Wells on guitar, fantastic guitar player, Kurt Arrington, and then you got Mike on vocals on his first album. And at the time I thought, man, this is a big change. You know, is this gonna, you know, but man, I accepted it right away. I thought this is a really a great album. It's more um, pointing to the US power metal than where I've said before, the first two Metal Churches albums aren't thrash albums, but they have thrashy elements. And for the most part, gone is those little elements on this one, but yeah, you know, you, if you know Metal Church, you know this album. Favorite track on here is Fake Healer. Other great tracks of, of Unsound Mind, Anthem to the Estrange is fantastic. And of course, Badlands. And I would say my um, deep track favorite would be The Spell Can't Be Broken. Mike's vocals are so awesome on that. But there it is, number three. Blessing in Disguise, Leaving Two Left and... If you watched my old Metal Church ranking, nothing has changed really. And uh, yeah, coming in at number two, debut, 1984's self-titled Metal Church. Uh, again, another music on vinyl reissue. I'm just happy to have this on vinyl. Very cool. And like I said earlier, this is the one where they kind of had that more crunchy looking logo. Once they signed with Electra Records, they streamlined that uh, to the logo that you know to this day. So originally released in 84, and then they were picked up by Elektra Records, releasing um, The Dark, and then they reissued um, the debut in 1985. So yeah, this one, great album. The one thing I could do without is the uh, cover, Deep Purple's Highway Star. Uh, it's there, whatever. But Beyond the Black, what a way to start off an album. Some other great tracks on here would be uh, Gods of Wrath, In the Blood, and my favorite, like I told you before, it's it's my favorite Metal Church song. It I just love the build up and uh, the you know the title band song Metal Church Metal Church fantastic. Number two is uh, debut 1984's Metal Church. You know and. By the by, the look of the you know not the 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 coolest looking band either either even live when I saw them in '86 I'm like, you know one guy's kind of going bald one guy's got a headband on but man when they started I think they started this the set list was with Start the Fire they had me and I already owned the album so I kind of knew it but this one has been my number one forever since 1986 since. 
that Turning Point show and Metallica and Metal Church tour together. 1986, The Dark. Um, I can honestly say there's, it would take a lot to ever knock this one off number one. Even though uh, Congregation of Annihilation is a fantastic album, the memories and things that go with this album, for me, you know, you know that feeling. But here's the back. And uh, yeah, favorite track on here. Favorite tracks. Well, Start the Fire, Ton of Bricks. These one, these, this is an album that I could, the, the, every lyric just comes back to me when I put this on. I can sing along with this whole thing. The title track, The Dark. Oh man, you know, something black and very fast. Oh, I just, I love how David's vocals on this. And another deep track favorite on here for me would be Burial at Sea. You know, yeah, Black Scarred and Bleeding from the Lashes to My Soul. Again, I'm not a singer, but you know those, you know those favorites that you have too. So yeah, produced by Mark Dodson. Then I actually I didn't tell you Blessing in Disguise was produced with, by Terry Date. And then they went back to Mark Dodson. So um, the Human Factor had more of this production style versus uh, Blessing in Disguise. But I could go on all day about Metal Church, but there is my kind of breakdown. One thing I did want to mention before I head out <clears throat> is if you've never heard um, the Heretic album, Breaking Point, the one that Mike did with the band, check this out. You might as well just throw it in the in with these Metal Church albums for me. I listen to this all the time. I shouldn't say all the time. Once or twice a year for sure. Great album. There is Mike on the back. Again, rest in peace, Mike, Kurt, David. But there is my updated Metal Church ranking. Uh, next on the channel, I think I got an update coming and uh, a few really cool ideas, at least I think they're cool anyways, for episodes of Six with Six Strings. Hope you enjoyed that one. Until next time, stay heavy.